This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 5, Section 3, Part 2, The Practice Problems. So these are the formulas that you will be using. Remember that we have 1, 2, and combining them together in some way. Remember that the sp um, speed of light is a constant and Planck's is also a constant. So the three formulas and the two constants will be on your test. You will not have to memorize them. However, you're going to need to be able to read a problem, pull out the information that's given to you, decide which of these formulas would be best to use, and then basically plug and chug. We also want to keep track of our units. And one meter equals, you remember what nano means? Nine. So it's one to nine zeros nanometers. Nanometers is one and nine zeros smaller than one meter. And again, that will also be given to you on the test. So you don't need to memorize, but you do have to make sure you understand how to use them. And we need to keep track of those units as well. So remember from that density formula, uh, this really cool uh, circle trick, remember that this line means divide. So if we were to cover up wavelength, because that's what we're solving for, it would be speed of light divided by frequency. We can also go the other way, right? If we are, uh, let's say, um, we're covering up, uh, let's say, uh, the speed of light for, for whatever reason, even though I never would let you um, solve for the speed of light because it's a constant, uh, it would be wavelength length times frequency and again that trick also works for that energy formula so energy divided by frequency would give us that Planck's constant again something I would never ask you for uh, but if I'm solving for energy it would be Planck's constant times frequency but these things again are going to be on your test uh, but you still need to be able to manipulate rearrange the formula to solve for what you want so this is also in your notes and you will not have to identify the parts of the electromagnetic spectrum but for some of these practice problems and um, the example problems that we're going to go over i let you use this i want you to be able to find certain wavelengths or certain types of radiation again just to kind of uh, show you what it can be used for or how how we identify certain things and remember our l's are on the left so can you pause the video and answer this type of question? Hopefully this makes sense, right? Non-visible next to red light would be down here, the infrared. How about this guy? The closest one to blue light that's non-visible would be the ultraviolet. Just so again, you're just looking and, and using and trying to understand where these values come from and what type of radiation that would be. So example one, what is the wavelength? What is means that that's what we're looking for. That's our question mark. Has a frequency of, so the frequency is basically my starting point. So pause the video, look at those formulas and decide which one is best to use. Well, since we're dealing with wavelength and frequency, I'm gonna use the speed of light equation. However, we want to rearrange it then we're going to basically plug and chug. We're going to put the constant for the speed of light and divide it by the frequency that was given to us. So pause, make sure that you can put this in your calculator correctly, and make sure you're using that EE button representing that times 10. Hopefully you got that as an answer, and seconds is going to cancel out, and we're left with meters. Hopefully that makes sense, because wavelength should be either in meters, and nanometers, um, some kind of meters, right, because that's our length. So just to show you that you can also use dimensional analysis, where if I would set it up, I would cancel out those units of seconds, and I would get the same exact thing. However, for these types of problems, I do recommend the formula way is the easier way. But I just wanted to show you that you can still cancel out those units. It's all about units. All right, so example two. Again, what is the wavelength? But now this time, we are going to solve it for nanometers. And I wanted to give you this as an example, because remember, in our formulas, wavelength is always going to be in meters. So now we're going to have to do a little bit of tr 
change of uh, converting of those units. So, and we have a frequency of, and then it also asks us type of radiation. Again, I'm not going to ask you that on the test, but I want you to see and be able to use that electromagnetic spectrum. So again, we're going to use that same formula and we're going to set it up the same exact way. We're going to put in our numbers. Again, at this point, if you want to pause and make sure that you can calculate it correctly, I got that as an answer, 5.2 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. But I don't want meters, we want nanometers. So because of that, we're going to do our conversion problem. So we're starting with meters, we're going to multiply it by conversion. Remember that meters has to go on the bottom, nanometers is going to go on top because that's where we're going. And meters, remember, is our base unit, so I can go anywhere. One goes with the larger unit, and then nano gets the one times 10 to the ninth power, nine zeros there. So again, make sure you can put this in your calculator correctly, and you should get 522 nanometers. Now, what does that mean? We want to know type of radiation. Well, nanometers, ooh, 522 nanometers is, looks like it's in the visible light area. So our answer would be visible light and even more specific in the green part of that visible light. Example number three, what is the ooh, frequency? We're going to find something new here. And now I'm giving you the wavelength. So I'm going to say we're still using that same equation, but now we're going to change it around a little bit, solving for frequency. Put in our two numbers. Again, that speed of light is a constant. That's the same number, but now I'm dividing it by the wavelength. Our meters is going to cancel out. Again, pause. Make sure you can do this in your calculator correctly using that EE button. And there's our answer. And seconds negative one or hertz is the answer to frequency. So hopefully that makes sense. So if you didn't pause already to try in your calculator, you should do that now. So again, looking at what type of radiation, especially with what I give you here, I only give you wavelength. So now let's focus on that wavelength. Times 10 to the negative 13 is going to be down here, and that radiation is gamma ray. So that would be the answer. So if I were to put this on a test, I definitely would give you this to look at, though. You do not have to memorize this at all, but it's more just to get you to understand where those values are and what, what part of that radiation it would reflect upon. All right, example number four, a gamma ray has a frequency. What is the ooh, energy of these photons? Remember, energy is always associated with the, those photons of light that are given off. So this time we're looking for energy and we're given frequency, okay? So why don't you look at those formulas? Which one do you think would be best to use? Hopefully you chose this one because I'm solving for energy and I'm given frequency. So again, I'm plugging and chugging and this H is a constant. This is Planck's constant, always going to be the same. So make sure you can use that EE button correctly on your calculator and you should get that. And energy is always going to be in joules. So again, our S here, seconds, and our S negative 1 here, right, seconds negative 1 power would cancel out, and you'd be left with joules. So that should make sense. Example five, again, we're calculating energy of those photons, and I'm giving you meters. It doesn't really tell me what that meters represents, but I'm sure you can figure out that that means wavelength, right? Meters is always a length, so that's wavelength. So again, which equation would we use for this one? I'm going to use this equation because this one has energy and wavelength in it. And those top two numbers there, the Planck's constant and the speed of light constant, those are the two numbers that are already given. So again, we're going to plug and chug. So, I, however, I do strongly suggest in your calculator, multiply, then equals, and then divide by this number. So you might want to do kind of like a two-step problem. So in your calculator, do your multiplication, equals, divide by that bottom number. And you should get this as an answer. And again, meters is going to cancel out here, seconds cancels out, and we're left with joules, which that's what we should be left with for our units, <clears throat> for energy. Number six, a metal ion is burned, and it gives us this red color at 710 ooh, nanometers. Again, we got to keep track of those units. So it says determine the energy that corresponds to this flame color. Okay, so we can use that energy 
a formula, but let's change these nanometers. Oh, I'm sorry here. Energy is our question mark. We're going to start with our nanometers. So first, let's change those nanometers to meters. So in this case, we're still going to do our conversion problem, but it's going to be flipped, right? Nanometers this time goes on the bottom. Meters goes on top. One goes with the larger unit, and one with those nine zeros goes with nano. So there's our answer, 7.1 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. Now we can use that energy equation, again, plugging and chugging. So our two constants multiplied divide by our wavelength in meters. Again, we've got to be real cautious of our meter unit. And so we should get that as an answer. Hopefully you paused and tried to do that in your calculator. Number seven, the energy given off by a metal ion when heated is determined. Okay, so this time they're giving us energy, and what do they want? They want the color. So they want the color, but we're going to be starting at energy. Hmm. Again, the color is almost always associated with wavelength. So again, we're going to use that. Um, we need to find that wavelength in nanometers to decide the color using that electromagnetic spectrum. So we're going to use that energy equation again. We're going to rearrange it. Again, if you're having trouble rearranging an equation, that's a little bit of algebra. Come see me or touch base with a friend in class. So then we're going to, again, plug and chug. Pause. Make sure you can do this. So our frequency, again, is only given to us, though, in meters. It's going to be a lot easier than to convert those meters into nanometers, which we've done before. So I'm going to just show you that. And we're at 580 meters. Now, if we look at that 580 meters, we're going to look down here and look at that. It's going to be in that yellow visible spectrum. So number eight, what is the frequency given joules? Again, do I have to tell you what those joules are? Yeah, I shouldn't have to because those units tell us that it is energy. So I'll have energy and I want frequency. So again, we're going to use that equation, plug and chug. I'm sorry, excuse me. In this case, we've got to rearrange it first, rearrange our, our formula. Now we can plug and chug. Notice our joules is going to cancel out and I'm left with S negative one or hertz. So there's our answer. Okay, so now you have practice problems to do. Pause the video, do the problems, then play the video to check your answers. You may either do all the questions at one time, or you may kind of do one and play the video to show your answer, make sure that you're doing it right. So at this point, guys, I'm basically gonna, gonna kind of click away here, okay? Are you ready? And don't forget about those units. So those are the six practice problems that you should have done by now. Here's the answers. Just a side note again, it says nanometers, so we want to make sure that we are putting them in the correct unit. In this case, I'm just showing you that it says blue light. It says 434 nanometers. So if I look here, yep, that 434 nanometers is in the blue light area of this electromagnetic spectrum. All right, so are you ready for one last question? As if you're doing a quiz, pause the video, decide what's going on here, and find an answer. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, guys, we will see you in class.